You, you think that it is a, a government failing in its moral duty, kicking the teeth for NHS staff just to get offered 1%? Well, if inflation runs at over 1%, as the OBR, the Bank of England and others are predicting, that's a pay cut. And I don't think a pay cut for NHS staff is fair. So I'm not surprised that the nursing unions and the, uh, the, the other bodies representing staff are describing this as a, a, a derisory and so on. I'm very angry about it. I mean, I'm angry about it. I don't think they should get a pay cut. No, so I don't think it's fair. Are you angry about the millions of people who've had a pay cut in the private sector all this last year? People on furlough, people struggling with their businesses, people uh, in retail, hospitality, haven't been able to work at all, or all the people who's, uh, who, who've just been sort of put on, you know, no overtime, no, just, just, just struggling to get by. Are you angry about all those millions of people as well? Well, well? well, of course I am, but we shouldn't be playing one group of workers off against another. And when we get out of this crisis, when we get out of these lockdowns i know we have we have disagreements on that but you know we will come out of these lockdowns thanks to the vaccination program and it is the nhs staff who are delivering that vaccination program but that, and it's I mean, the nhs staff who are saving lives or fighting to save lives in response to this horrific virus well so, it is but also i mean i mean supermarket staff have been feeding us you out um people have been delivering things people have been making things in factories all in the private sector i mean th- those people won't have had a pay rise no but the, i mean the ch- uh, chancellor doesn't set the pay rates no. for supermarket staff and so on. I mean, I mean, we, we tried to do some of that back in the 70s and it didn't work. But, I mean, the Chancellor is responsible for the public sector pay mm. and he's and he's offering but, them a pay cut. But isn't, isn't there an awful lot of tugging on heartstrings there? This whole NHS workers are all COVID heroes. That's all 1.5 million of them, um, despite the fact that, uh, you, know, ha- you know, half of them are not working on the front line uh, with patients. They're not even clinical workers. Um, uh, this idea that they've all been battling, they've all been putting their lives at risk and they are somehow just much better people than everyone else who's also, who've also been battling through and doing their best, uh, whether in the public sector or the private sector. This is not to insult NHS workers. I'm the daughter of one. Uh, I've got members of my family working in the NHS still. Um, but but can we do, we do we need to always sort of deify do- uh, n- nurses in particular and anyone in the NHS as if they are battling every single day? Um, to keep alive whilst they save the nation. When, you know what, for most of them, they're just going to do the job. I think people are immensely proud of what our NHS workers have done these past 12 months. I mean, they're so proud of them at the best of times. But this, these 12, 12 months, they, I, I think they have been heroes. And I was happy and proud to join the doorsteps and clap on the doorsteps. I don't know if you did I, or not. I, 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 I certainly did for, for about six weeks, yes, when I was well enough after COVID to, to do so. Um, but I was clapping the you know, frontline NHS workers. Do, do you genuinely think that someone who sits in a back office at a, at a hospital booking appointments is a, is, a, is a hero? Well, people who sit in back offices uh, are supporting the people. Yeah, do you think that person that is an I mean, NHS I mean, hero I mean, who deserves I mean, a 12.5% pay rise? I mean, the people sat in the back offices at Talk Radio were supporting you to produce such a fantastic but, show. But, but they don't call either me or them heroes. We're not saving lives. Yeah, I completely but, but, but accept but that. But neither are most they? people in the NHS. So they're could part, we not part, just talk about whether or not people... The part of the team and the support, the same way your the staff at the top radio are supporting you to be such a brilliant mm, presenter. Darling. They are part of the team, and if you take them away, you know, if if the if I, if the person who um, was taken away who rang me up to get me on the phone, I want to be able to come on your show this morning. Hey, it's all part of the team. Jonathan, I'm together. not pretending for a moment that I'm essential work. Listen, I think we can all agree the people working in supermarkets and the people who collect our bins are far more essential than anything you or I ever will do in our lives. And let's no, not, that's but, definitely true. That, no, but that, <laughs> you, know, you and I both that. No, but I'm just saying that when we ever talk about the NHS, we talk about it in terms which are... They are, they're very different from how we talk about a- anyone else in any other group. Now, yes, we know that NHS workers have had a, they had a pay freeze for many years under the George Osborne years. But, but in the reality is, you know, so did most people in the private sector in that period. And they didn't have uh, protected pensions. They didn't have automatic career progression pay rises. The, the reality is the public sector is going to have to take a lot of the hit in the next few years, along with the private sector. And yes, we are all in this together. But why do we think that some public sector workers should be treated differently. Well, when you say take a hit, you're talking about pay cuts. You're saying NHS staff take a pay cut. So if pri- millions quite, of I'm private quite, sector I'm, workers have had I'm, a pay cut this year by a huge percentage. I am quite, I am quite happy to call NHS uh, workers heroes because I think they do do extraordinary things, including 
the clinicians on the front line and the backroom staff, the team backing them up, freeing up their time so they can do that clinical work and making sure everything everything runs smoothly. Of course, I want to see private sector workers have pay rises as well, which is why I want to see measures which help stimulate the economy and grow the economy so there is more wealth in our society, so that people got decent jobs so they can pay pay for their mortgage and keep it and, and keep keep a nice uh, keep a roof over their heads for them and their families. Of course I want to see that. But where the government have a direct responsibility, which is for public sector pay, I don't think they should be cutting the pay of NHS staff. Okay. So um, what else would you what else would you cut to pay for it? You're either going to cut another service or what taxes would you rise to raise well, to pay for it? Minute. I mean they've paid out three hundred the million hundreds of millions of pounds to companies which gave them duff PPE, and they've not even asked for the money back. There's lots of different things they could do differently to find extra resources to give NHS staff a pay rise. OK, so the mon- you're saying the money's there? Yeah, well, government's about choices. I mean, chancellors make choices all the time, and they can make different decisions. They can have a political argument about the particular decision, but they could make different decisions and allocate the funding. OK. Can I also ask you about uh, well, different decisions? AstraZeneca jab, uh, uh, subject of uh, very big issues over uh, the EU's attempts to get their hands on it when we had more than them. Uh, we've seen Italy now getting the EU's permission to block uh, the export of 250,000 AstraZeneca jabs made in Italy that were due to be sent off to Australia. They're keeping them in the EU. This is Angela Merkel and uh, Manuel Macron have both decided to sort of uh, um, give up their claims, their completely false claims that the AstraZeneca jab uh, is uh, not as safe and not as uh, not as effective as the Pfizer jab and actually uh, allowing you know uh, that's now been approved in Germany and uh, and you know uh, they're actually allowing it for over 65s um do you think if Boris Johnson had been had talked about a vaccine in that way or if was or was blocking the export of our vaccines to the EU do you think that the Labour Party might have rather more to say about it than they have had to say about Angela Merkel Emmanuel Macron and Italy Well, I'm sure if that was happening in the United Kingdom, there would be huge outcry about it. Um, Now, (laughs) you're trying to sort of say that we're like uh, implicitly endorsing their approach. Not very critical. No, 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 we're not. Because my focus is is the COVID pandemic in the United Kingdom. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not spending my time uh, following the ins and outs COVID pandemic on a day-to-day level in Italy, Italy and Germany and there's other countries you mentioned. I just funny thing, if Donald Trump had uh, said what about the, the Pfizer va- sorry, the, the AstraZeneca vaccine, what Angela Merkel and, uh, and uh, Manuel Mac- Macron said, which was totally false about the vaccine not being effective, would you have said something then? Because the Labour Party is always happy to say something when Donald Trump said it. Um, I mean, you know, <laughs> possibly, but this is, these are sort of hypotheticals. I mean, I'm focusing on COVID in the United Kingdom. Do I think, do I think that we should have this sort of vac- the, 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 the blocking of vaccine exports if AstraZeneca has contractual agreements with other countries. No, of course I don't. 